welcome and hello to the Missouri Rural Health Association Lunch and Learn webinar series. I am Rachel Hassani. I'm the Director of Education and Engagement here at MRHA. And today we're thrilled to partner with the Missouri Council on Aging for today's webinar. If you have any questions throughout, feel free to drop those in the chat. And um, if there's anything else that I can help with, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'll go ahead and put my email address in the chat as well. Today we are recording this webinar, and then afterward we'll be posting it to MRHA Connect, which is our virtual platform. I will send you the link to that after the webinar, so you can feel free to view that again, download it, share it with your colleagues um, at your convenience. Um, so next up, our next webinar is next Thursday, and for that one we will be partnering with the Coalition for Justice for Elder and Disabled Adults. So if this is a topic area that you're particularly interested in, um, I think you will also find next week's webinar very informative. You can see all of our upcoming webinars on our website. And um, I also wanted to mention that registration is now open for our annual conference. That will be November 6th and 7th at the Lake of the Ozarks. Um, Old Kinder Hook is the location, and we would love to see you there. The agenda and all that information is also available on our website. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Nicole Brueggemann and Bridget Gietemeyer. Uh, Nicole and Bridget, the floor is all yours. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for having us today. We're excited to be here and present a topic that is pretty near and dear to um, our hearts. Before we get started, I want to introduce Tina Uridge, who I think you can see in one of the schools. She is the executive of the Clay County Senior Fund. She also serves as a board member and will be the incoming president uh, of the Missouri Council on Aging in 2025. So Tina is serving as an advisor uh, for us today, having ran a senior fund, started and ran a senior fund for many years. Um, so she's our resident expert as we guide you through this process today. Uh, before we actually dive into what is a senior levy fund, we are going to talk a little bit about the Missouri Council on Aging. And can you all see my screen? Great. Um, so the Missouri, how, first of all, just by like somebody come on, raise your hand, popcorn, whatever. How many of you have heard of the Missouri Council on Aging? <laughs> Laurie, I see you out there. In my little romper room Zoom screens here. Hey, Larry. Okay, so I'm going to take that as just a few of us are familiar. I, I have heard great, Tony. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Missouri you Council on Aging. Sorry. I don't know how to do myself. Um, the Missouri Council on Aging has actually been. Uh, organizing for quite some time. So back in 2018 is when this kind of conversation first started to coalesce around building and forming a larger statewide coalition to address issues that are primarily facing older adults, uh, and persons with disabilities who are aging in Missouri. And I don't have to tell you all, I'm actually going to show you all a little bit just how much Missouri is aging uh, and how our trends move forward with an aging population. So since 2018, um, a pretty strong coalition of leaders from across Missouri has been forming, working together, thinking about how we can support older adults across Missouri. Uh, and in 2023, we actually formalized into a 501c3. So uh, in, in terms of inception and concept, we've been around since 2018. In terms of actual 501c3 organization, we've been around for about 18 months. Uh, we are working across the state and have just recently formalized a policy agenda that will guide our work in 2025. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and why these issues connect. So primarily, the council serves as a, a, a convener and a organization that is working across other organizations to educate and advocate for programs and policies that improve the lives of Missourians as we all age, right? So 
we know it's not about you or you. It's about all of us. And it's about all of us aging in a state and aging well in a state. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. What guides our work is that we are a field builder. So we want to work across organizations and with folks who are who are both complementary working with with older adults in in place and in community so the older adult network as we refer to it we also want to build a cross sector coalition so this isn't about just service providers this is about all forms of organizations who are aiming to serve older adults so as a coalition and as an organization, we get to think big about aging in Missouri. Uh, one of those things that you're going to hear about today is both a lever at the local level, and it helps us think bigger about aging in Missouri. We want to promote the full story of aging. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of reframing aging, but we uh, use that in our communications and uh, in our thinking that guides our board, that guides our staff. To really think about there are many of us who are aging at different abilities and how do we tell that full story. Then the third one, and I kind of talked about this, is that we really do want to establish a robust cross-sector multidisciplinary coalition. Um, that's a lot of words to say everyone is welcome at our table because we are all touching the lives of older adults, whether we're caregivers, providers, um, whatever role we're playing. And finally, to amplify the collective needs. And I think you're gonna to see today a little bit of how we are really kind of beginning to look at local level, county level uh, resources in the role of amplifying those needs. So what do we do? What, what do we do and how can you get involved? Uh, first of all, during the legislative session, we actually host a biweekly advocacy call related to older adults and persons with disabilities um, aging policies. So we follow and track policies that are at the legislative level that impact older adults. Uh, you can join us on those calls. We'll give you some information at the end of the call. We offer network education and training. So anything from how a bill becomes a law to policy level briefings, right? So we call those learning labs and they're kind of 30 minute high level. Uh, what do you need to know about this policy to be informed? And then finally, we do engage at the legislative level. Uh, so we are educating legislators, we're engaging them in one-on-one -on -one conversations about how Missourians are aging and what our state looks like in the future. As I mentioned, uh, we now have and are guided by some policy priorities, which is really exciting in the development of an organization. And one of the things that we noticed uh, as, as a working board and as a staff, as we talked with folks throughout the state, one of the real clear kind of through threads, if you will, in our conversations was all about economics and economic security and stability. And so that's really kind of what is driving our policy agenda. Underneath that, there are three main priorities that we are going to focus on. You're going to hear about one today, and that is to expand local and actually state level funding for essential services for older adults. Um, many of you on this call are very aware that there are proposed cuts to older adult services, home and community based services on a regular basis. How do we how do we safeguard that? And then also, how do we work all three levels, so local, state, and federal, to really support older adults um, who need access to benefits and programs? Second one is to increase investments and resources for family care providers. Um, if I asked you all to raise your hand, if you are a caregiver, I would hope that everyone here is raising their hand because you're probably giving care to someone, whether it be a child, an older adult, uh in, in some capacity and if you aren't you know someone who is so this touches all of our lives and then finally to protect older adults from financial fraud and harm this is a very growing area um, that needs a lot of attention and we're excited to focus on it as we lead across the next legislative level so i mentioned our population is growing uh here's a heat map to show just that from 2010 
to 2030, this is what it looks like. So all of those yellow counties are 25% or greater at a population of 60 and above. So we are heading into an older uh, population. We, we are seeing that play out. I'm sure at your community level, um, you're seeing that play out too. So we are definitely seeing the wave. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today and I'll segue into that. And that is the role of the Senior Levy Fund. How many of you, raise hand, shout out, have heard of a Senior Levy Fund? Marie? I haven't, and I live in one of the three counties that has it. Well, I grew up in one of the three counties that has it. Great. Um, that's awesome. You know, most people don't realize that they live in a county that has a senior levy fund. So kudos to you for joining to learn what it what it's all about. So Missouri currently has 55 senior levy funds and or counties with a sales tax that support older adults. So you can see from this map, all of the orange counties have a senior levy fund. The purple counties have a sales tax that is dedicated to older adults. Uh, Bridget is gonna do a deep dive into this in a minute, but I want, just as a, just as a fun intro, does anyone know how much money these 55 counties generate for older adults. And you can take a wild guess. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> oh, great answer. So it's around, and I'm going to say around because none of this is, you know, a whole number because inflation and property tax changes around 17 million across these counties. So let me ask you this question. If it's 17 million across these counties, if the other 60 counties had a senior levy fund, how much money do you think we would generate as a state? Well, given the fact that the ones that don't have a senior levy fund are some of the most well-to-do counties, especially St. Louis County. I don't know that I, I don't know. Maybe still not enough Scarlet, right? Probably not because they probably wouldn't want to have an adequate um, levy. Okay. So the rough number is around 60 million. All right. So yeah, you can see that. Enough. But still not enough, right? So Larissa said 30 million. Um, it would be all total around 60 million. Again, that's a moving number because of different, you know, uh, factors in our property values. But you can still see that this is a pretty powerful tool to use at the local level to help support older adults. So Bridget's going to take a deep dive into this for us. Um, I'm going to turn it over to her. I'm going to I'm going to advance her slide. So uh, we'll see how well we can dance here, Bridget. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so thank you for having us again. Um, so today we are going to want you to walk away with the answers to a couple of different questions. Firstly, what exactly is a senior levy fund? Um, like you said, it's familiar to some. To others, this is an entirely new concept. Um, next, how exactly is it governed? How much can be collected? How exactly does the levy work? We also want you to know why this option could be useful in your community. Like Nicole said, the older adult population is rapidly growing here in the state. Um, and we have lots of funding gaps that will continue to grow as people are living longer. For services to continue and expand, um, more funding is going to be needed to be available for these programs. And if and when this piques your interest, we want you to know where you can start as an individual applicant. And we want you to know that there is help in getting um, a senior levy fund started and who you can turn to. Um, for measuring the readiness of your community to assistance with structure, um, there's help and support available to you. So um, as you can see here, there are several states across the U.S. that have been using local initiatives to produce sustainable funding for older adult programming. Um, despite the growing amount of older adults across the U.S., federal and state funding has remained limited. 
Um, to increase funding, local communities have looked inward to local solutions to help support all of us as we age. Um, there have been a variety of solutions proposed. For example, some states have come up with payroll taxes, constitutional amendments. Um, here in Missouri, we have authorized these property tax levies, and then also those sales tax levies are authorized as well. So next slide. So uh, Missouri first authorized this in state statute back in 1989 um, and allowed counties to put the property tax levy on the ballot. The current law, law allows for a maximum of five cents of every $100 of assessed property value to be put towards a senior tax fund for services that must benefit older adults within the community. So all of the money that is raised and put into that fund has to stay within the community to serve the older adults. Um, that's one of the greatest appeals of the senior levy is it allows communities to demonstrate that they do want to take care of their own and that they can do it locally how they see most fit. All right, next slide. All right, so services that can be funded are plenty abound, and there are a lot of ones that are being cut at the federal and state level. Um, most commonly, we see home delivered meals being a source of funding for the senior levy funds. Um, at the federal level, one of the main uh, acts that funds this is the Older Americans Act, which has to be reauthorized every several years, um, but it has not kept pace with the number of older adults and the growing inflation. Um, waiting lists for home delivered meals are growing in many communities, and in fact, Missouri is anticipating some cuts from the federal level for these home delivered meal services. Um, so a lot of local communities are going to be looking for ways to patch it, and communities that do have that senior levy are grateful to have the buffer that that fund is going to provide. Senior center operations are another common usage that we see. These, senior, these centers are in your community, and they offer older adults a space to gather, socialize, eat healthy meals, um, and quite frankly, just have a little bit of fun. These locations can help ward off social isolation and offer an accessible place for older adults to go and enjoy the company of others. Um, we also see funds being used for transportation, and that is one of the biggest needs that we hear from older adults, service providers, caregivers alike. Um, senior levies are able to flexibly use these to fund medical trips, socialization, and essential errands. It's especially important for some rural communities where there are few or no public transportation options, um, and that transportation option is really essential to trying to keep folks in their homes for as long as possible. Home safety repairs and maintenance are another use of the funds. For someone living on a fixed income, a small unexpected repair can really significantly um, not only damage their financial well-being, but can spill over into other areas of their life, like in their health, maybe skipping a medication um, or missing a doctor's appointment because you can't afford the co-pays. Simple safety modifications like adding grab bars in the bathroom or making a front entrance more accessible can make it much safer and easier for an older adult to stay in their home. Finally, we have some in-home services um, that can be a variety from respite for caregivers where somebody can come and sit with a loved one while the caregiver is able to go run errands, maybe go to their own medical appointments, or quite frankly, even just go and take a book and read in the park somewhere for a couple of hours. They can also fund with assistance for activities of daily living for things that you don't necessarily think of. Um, maybe laundry is down in the basement and uh, one of the caregivers can go and do it there like cleaning, like things that you can't really reach, um, our meal prep. Most people, they just don't realize how expensive it can be to hire an in-home care provider. A lot of agencies require a minimum of hours or days per week, and it can easily run $100 a day, and that's kind of low-balling it for a service. But most importantly, what these funds can do is they can be used to fund any program that will improve the health, nutrition, and quality of life of people who are 60 and older. Um, if the community doesn't know exactly what they need, they can go and do a community needs assessment to make the most benefit of the use of the funds. And the local control of this program is kind of what really makes it exceptional. All right, next slide. All right, so like I said, current state statute allows counties to ask voters to levy a tax of up to five cents per each $100. Um, counties that are more tax hesitant can choose to set the levy at a lower rate of two or three cents. Um, and you can either get it on the ballot through signature collection or through the county legislative body. Um, the state statutes are on the slide right there if you want to read it. And I know that sounds like a lot of mumbo jumbo, so let's like take a visual look at it instead. <laughs> okay, so here's a sample tax bill. 
say that your home is worth $100,000 for argument's sake and to make the math simple. Um, here in Missouri, 19% of your property can be taxed. So 19% 19 of 100,000 and you at 19,000. Say your community votes the full amount allowed by the state statute. Um, that's five cents, but of course, with the Hancock lid here in Missouri, it's never quite a pretty even number that eats out. Um, but so what that leaves you with is 190 sets of $100 or 190 nickels, which means that if your home is worth $100,000, you're going to be paying about $950 a year for these senior service funds. All right, but we have a real life example as well. Um, luckily, one of our board members was generous enough to break down um, his $1,000 tax bill with us. Um, so as you can see, a vast majority of those funds are going to be going to your school district, Ozark, which is at 60%. Your fire district is getting about 10%. Now we're below the 10% mark with the Ozark Road District at 5%, City of Ozark 4, Community College, Library, Ambulance District, all sitting at about 2%. And then the Developmental Disability Board is sitting right above 1%, which they also do a lot of really cool work. It's a similar program to senior levies. Um, but they're sitting right above the 1%. And then less than your 1% is the senior levy fund, um, which is about 0.7%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but all of those funds adding up together um, makes a big impact. So last year, Christian County collected over $785,000 for their senior levy fund. Um, and they've been doing a great job being the stewards of those funds. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about what they're doing in their community. All right, so Christian County Senior Fund was established back in the early 2000s and they are really tapped into what their community needs and they're able to respond to what is needed in a timely fashion. Um, the fund here really supports two different senior center operations, both Nixa and Ozark. Um, these centers provide fun activities like chair yoga that you can see um, that help participants maintain mobility and have some fun while doing it. They offer hot and balanced meals to older adults at no charge five days a week. Um, they've established their own transportation program through the centers and have purchased accessible vehicles um, to ensure that all people, regardless of their, all older adults, regardless of their abilities, are able to get those transportation needs met. Um, they take people to medical appointments, including they have the really unique feature of actually being able to cross county lines into Springfield where a lot of specialists are located and other transportation providers can't go. Um, they make sure people are getting to the centers and uh, doing essential errands, all the good stuff. They've also done a really good job of bringing the fund, the community into the fund. So they've built collaborative partnerships um, with law enforcement, paramedics. Um, and are able to call on them when emergencies happen, like an ice storm, and they go out and do well-being checks. Um, and whenever folks do, like the paramedics do run into older adults that need help, they're able to be referred um, to the senior fund to get some assistance. Finally, Christian County, they have one of my favorite examples of showing that the fund can provide for specific community needs that you're not necessarily going to find a magical grant for. Um, so levy officials knew in the community that they were in need of access to foot care for folks who had neuropathy and diabetes. Um, that wasn't too far away and wasn't overly expensive. So the fund went and sought out a nurse um, to provide the care twice per month at their centers. Um, and it was a huge success. It, they were able to continue operating it during COVID um, while the local community came together to make sure that they had the hand sanitizer, um, the gloves, anything that they needed. The community wanted to make sure that the folks were able to be taken care of. All right, rock and roll. All right. And so, like I've said before, the beauty of the fund is that there is local control for these services needed. Um, the state statute does actually govern who needs to sit on the board. So once the levy is passed, none of the funds can be spent until the board of directors is appointed and everybody's up and running. Um, and the governing body of the county is going to appoint the members of that board at first. Um, all administrative control and management of the fund rests solely within that board of directors. They go about setting bylaws, policies, procedures, um, and manage the budget. Some communities choose to do kind of a mix of services of in-house and then have contracts with other providers. Some communities choose to go about being solely grant makers and agencies can apply for funding. 
Um, the statute does allow for professional staff, and right now four different counties do have that. And once again, it's kind of customizable for what is best for the community. All right. Lovely. So we've just presented a lot of information to you. A whole lot uh, in a very short amount of time. I'm going to pause right here and ask if there are any specific questions about a levy fund before we point you into where to get started. How would you say that the sales tax levy funds um, are sales tax or the property tax levy funds the most successful? What you said. Ooh, great question. Tina, you may know the answer to this one. You know, it's um it's hard to say. I don't I, can't, I don't know a lot about the sales tax um because that is not as much readily public information as um uh, what is collected through property tax. Um so it's, I think they're both a good strategy for local funding. Um, possibly citizens may think that, you know, that's more doable because it's not a uh, consistent, um, you know, raise to your property tax. Mm -hmm. It would be more based on, um, you know, the, the revenue from, from local sales. Uh, and then if you're living in a county, like say down in the Southern part, of Missouri, where tourism is very popular, then sales tax may be a, you know a good way to go. Um, so, uh, obviously, the property tax is more popular because there are fifty two counties that uh -huh. have the property tax, and only um, uh, three that have sales tax. Great question. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions. My name's David Miller. I'm here in Pulaski County, and I think you just said that the county commissioners were the ones that are in charge of establishing the board of directors. Uh, how do we find out? Do we do we just need to contact the county commissioners and find out who these uh, where the board meetings are being held, or uh, if if we wanted to attend those? Is that yeah. I'll, I'll take that one because Pulaski County is my hometown. I grew up in yeah. Crocker. There you go. I married yeah. a girl from Crocker. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and Andy Helms is my classmate. Um, so you, it should be uh, readily available information um, that who is on the board. You should be able to get that through the Pulaski County Clerk's Office. Um, if they meet regularly or, you know, throughout the year, that, that information should be posted and it's, they're certainly supposed to be, uh, open to the public meetings. Thank um, you. So that's the best place is to start with your, your clerk. Did you say you were, uh, one of the commissioners or? No, no, oh, okay. no. I just, I work for a community action agency here in Richland, oh, okay. uh, Missouri Ozark Community Action. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're trying to get a transportation piece up and functioning. Uh, we're working with a sister agency out in West Central. Yeah. So uh, we're uh, we're uh, about to get on our feet, but we're we're working on that. Yeah, I'm with Dayoc. So, <laughs> and we're talking to South Central, not our West Central. Um, but right now, to talk about transportation, I have a meeting set up next week. But we also, I, I personally am working on child care in Mississippi County. So that's what, which is my home county. So Very that good. was what, so yeah, community action. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you should be able to find out when those boards um, uh, review kind of their funding priorities for the next year and sure. make that information aware to them, aware of we're seeing a growing need for transportation. How are you addressing those needs and what is the process uh, to uh, learn more about how we can apply or partner or collaborate um, for this funding? Very good. Thank you so much. Other questions? We all learn from each other, so don't hold back.
All right. Well, maybe some more will come up here while we talk about what to do and where to start. So as Bridget mentioned, uh, this can be uh, on the ballot and it is a ballot initiative and it can get on the ballot initiative two ways. Uh, first, through the county legislative body, if you have a council or commissioners, however that works in your county, or a, a signature campaign. So we always recommend to everyone that you start with your local commissioners, right, and really talk to them about the benefits of a levy fund and who and why it's beneficial to your community. These are county-contained funds. So I live in St. Charles County. Our funding doesn't go, we don't have a levy fund, but if we did, it does not go to Lincoln County. It does not go to St. Louis County. It stays in St. Charles County. I'm going to put a link in the chat to our friends at the Missouri Association of Senior Levy Boards. Uh, interestingly enough, the Missouri Council on Aging and the senior levy boards are joining together this fall uh, to really strengthen the administrative and infrastructure of really helping to provide technical assistance to communities who want to start a senior levy fund. There'll be more information on that coming, but we realize that this is a pretty big lift for communities. Um, it takes a lot of hands on deck, if you will, to get organized around it to pull together, to help educate folks um, on what they're voting on when, the, when you ask them to vote on a ballot, ballot initiative, and really just kind of keeping synergy going throughout a campaign. So, I've got to find my mouse here. Here's kind of what we call phase one, building a coalition of advocates in your community, all right? So who are the people who might be most interested in this? And we should put community action agencies on here because that's a great, great um, organization to kind of pull together around this. So you have area agencies on aging in your areas. So there are 10 across the region. If you don't know um, about your local area agency on aging, we certainly encourage you to do that. They pro provide a lot of valuable resources and programming. Philanthropy, um, are there foundations or um, philanthropic organizations in your community that might be interested in supporting uh, a uh, senior levy fund. Healthcare professionals and hospitals, right? Certainly now we're getting to allied groups who really support and understand the needs and the growing needs of older adults at the county level. Senior living facilities, uh, so really understanding the long-term care needs uh, of services and supports needed for long-term care. Chambers of commerces and business. Remember, it's not all about people who have who are aging and disabled. It's about people who are aging in place and maybe fully abled and who are contributing at the local level, uh, but may need assistance in their home, like Bridget said, with a grab bar or, or a accessible ramp, something of that nature. Faith and community leaders, again, allied groups are our friends in these types of initiatives. Civic leaders, and former elected officials. Also, outside of your county, the campaign is ran at the county level. Are these 55 counties across Missouri that can be really good examples of how they ran campaigns? Tina is currently working alongside Jackson County. Um, there are some initiatives uh, on the eastern side of the state as well that are being stood up. And so how you learn from each other and kind of build this learning collective is very important to what worked here may not work here, but what worked here will work here, that type of thing. So really building this community outside of your of your county as well. Our two organizations can certainly help with a lot of things in that phase one building. Um, if you go on to the Mo Also website, which I just sent into the chat, there is a, a toolkit, an actual toolkit that you can follow to help you get started. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step of how you build this coalition and how you think about framing an initiative in your community. Again, we'll help you with networking across the state to other like-minded individuals who, are, who have ran these campaigns. Um, education on best practices, advocating at the local level, um, and then the technical assistance to counties in passing a senior levy fund. Um, we have a great group of advisors. They, they, don't, um, they don't 
have unlimited time, but they have time to dedicate to helping leaders in counties to stand these initiatives up. So I'm going to say that many people on this call will want to think about some things, right? Like you're, you, this might pique your interest and be like, wow, could we really do this in our community? Or how, where would we even get started? Uh, the role and the goal here is to reach out to us. Please reach out to us if you have interest in doing this in your community. Um, my contact information is there. Bridget's contact information is there. We can get to Tina and others quickly um, if you have specific questions that we can't answer. You can follow us on all kinds of social media channels. Bridget does a great job of, of putting us out there and informing people through those, through those media channels. And I'm going to drop a couple other things in the chat for you. Uh, the first one is a link to the Missouri Council on Aging's website. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's a registration link on this page that if you are interested in following along and you want to sign up for education or for any kind of technical assistance capacity around our learning, please do so through this website. I'm also going to type in Bridget's, um, or Bridget, if you want to type it in your, your email, you can reach out directly to Bridget. If you don't want to go through the website, that's okay too. And then the last thing I'm going to actually ask you all to think about and do is to take a few minutes and you can share this with the people at home. You can share it with the people in your office. You can share it with your friends and neighbors. Um, we have a little bit of a statewide initiative called Missourians Age Well. And it will take you approximately one to two minutes to complete this little uh, powerful crowdsourcing uh, initiative. It asks you one question, how can Missourians age well? It will not ask you to identify who you are or where you're from. It will ask you, I think, either for your county or your zip code. Uh, but we are learning from residents all across Missouri on how older adults can age well. Interestingly enough, transportation does rise to the top, but there are many other things that rise to the top too. Uh, one of those being access, right? Like access to information, access to resources, access to healthcare. Um, access is a really big piece that we are hearing through this initiative. So hop on, share your thoughts too. Uh, you will inform us and you help us inform legislators uh, especially when we're in their district, about what older adults need. So we invite you to do that as well.